Yes! Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist. A little announcement real quick. First off, if you want that Nintendo Switch for the Nintendo Switch giveaway, be sure to check the Gleamio link in the description below and make sure you're following all that stuff in there. The more you follow, the more your chances are for winning. I believe we're announcing the winning Switch selectee on April 7th. April 7th or April 8th? I think it's April 7th. Uh, it's that Friday's episode, we'll be announcing the winner, so be sure to make sure that you are in there in order to win the Switch, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and a Pro Controller ready for you guys to say thank you for all the years of support and encouraging all of you guys who are tuning in every week to really make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell button across all the, the platforms we've got. There's too much stuff, guys. I'm sorry. I didn't make it up. I didn't make this up. Mass Effect Andromeda is here, and based on what everyone's saying, it doesn't look too great? I don't know because I've never played a Mass Effect game before. My buddy Kyle Van, uh, who's been helping me produce the show on and off for a long time, rants and raves about Mass Effect. And so I promised him that I would do a video on it and the day has come. Let's talk about Mass Effect 1. And hey, if you guys are in Manhattan Beach, go to Uncle Bill's Pancake House. It is one of the best restaurants in the South Bay. It's one I always go to as a kid. Uh, as I do now, and uh, if you see Kyle there, tell him to say hi. Hi, Kyle. Let's go. Completing RPGs for this show is always an emotional mixed bag for me, ranging from delight to outright dread. This has nothing to do with the quality of the games, but rather their length. RPGs may be one of my favorite genres, but the amount of time, work, and slight insanity that they require to complete is nothing to scoff at. Putting hundreds of hours into a video game only to get a 30 minute episode out of it leads to choosing one's battles very carefully. And few developers are as skilled at churning out colossal RPGs as the people over at Bioware who've been creating these giant games for over two decades. But after taking players to a galaxy far, far away in Knights of the Old Republic and introducing them to a mythical version of ancient China in Jade Empire, Bioware was ready to take players back to space again. But not for more exotically colored lightsabers. Instead, Bioware was priming a brand new sci-fi IP designed as the first entry in a trilogy. Bioware apparently spent mad ducats in developing Mass Effect, creating new development technologies capable of building a virtual universe chock full of realistically barren planets and facial animations that steer very clear of the uncanny valley. But the most impressive aspect of Mass Effect might just be the sheer amount of anal retentive detail within the game's narrative, including unique characters, cultures, and worlds, which can all be directly influenced by the player's decisions. When Mass Effect was released in 2007 for the Xbox 360, holy sh that was 10 years ago, it received admirable accolades for its gameplay. But what really got people salivating was the world in which the game took place. Long after the credits had rolled, players' minds were still engrossed with the adventures of Commander Shepard and the various spacefaring beings that he or she was having space sex with. The game was ported to the PC about a year later, but it didn't come to the PlayStation 3 until 2012, a full five years later. So even though I'm late to the franchise, it's good to know that I'm not the only one. Diving into a new series blind is always intimidating, but the prospect of completing this game seems especially daunting after I did some investigating. Finding out that there's no way to complete Mass Effect in a single playthrough was a bit of a bummer, but not much, because being able to do that with an RPG is magical Christmas land and only happens once in a blue moon. It seems that completing the game means beating it no less than three times, including the two hardest difficulties. I plan to start out on casual mode, don't judge me, and then choose two different companions for each subsequent playthrough, due to a set of trophies that require me to spend a sufficient amount of quality time with each of them. The only thing that I can potentially see throwing a monkey wrench into this plan is the sheer amount of stuff there is to do in games like this. A single playthrough can go on for ages when it seems like every NPC 
NPC you make eye contact with shoves another subquest into your face. Not to mention that the narrative, what might be the best part of this game, might lose its allure the third time through. As handsome as Commander Shepard is, I'm not sure if I'll be able to stare at that mug for that long. But then again, I can always keep it fresh by changing into the female version of Shepard. But which one is cuter? The fate of the galaxy will not be sealed on the battlefield, but rather on the runway. Work it, you beautiful bastards. Uh! Mass Effect's futuristic sci-fi setting is surprisingly impressive, with alien concepts and intergalactic politics rivaling the likes of Star Trek, and with an impressive production value to boot. Aside from a few instances of dubious design and an uneven narrative every now and then, Mass Effect provides enough presentational polish and nerdy minutia to satisfy even the most ravenous of RPG nerds. Mass Effect takes place in a future in which humanity got lucky and stumbled onto some powerful alien technology left behind by an extinct race of aliens known as the Protheans. This fortuitous turn of events thrusted humanity onto the galactic stage like a beauty pageant mom, alongside several other far more mature races and cultures. Now, in the year 2183, Commander Shepard, the most featureless and yet somehow most gorgeous soldier in the entire galaxy, has been sent on a mission to a human colony in order to retrieve a recently discovered and valuable piece of Prothean technology known as a beacon. But an incredibly hostile race of sentient machines known as the Geth invades the colony first. Don't we just hate when that happens? They've been instructed to secure the beacon by their leaders, an agent of intergalactic order gone rogue named Saren, and the scary ass religious leader called Matriarch Benezia. Their ultimate goal is to resurrect yet another race of mechanical baddies known as the Reapers, who supposedly systematically purge the entire galaxy of life every 50,000 years. Commander Shepard manages to locate the beacon, but when he gets too close, he's zapped with some sort of energy that gives him ominous visions of the death of every living thing in the galaxy. Now, it's up to Shepard and his motley crew of freaks and geeks to tear ass through the galaxy and stop the most evil pair of space villains since Rita Repulsa married Lord Zed. Very early on, Mass Effect boasts an engaging universe, complete with thought-provoking concepts that go beyond, that guy looks different than me, shoot it till it's dead. The angle of humanity being the new kids on the galactic block allows for plenty of intriguing sociopolitical moments. Witnessing all of those disparate alien races attempt to coexist with one another is the most fascinating part of the narrative, like when this alien Hare Krishna starts preaching its beliefs in this public area. The authorities don't want it there, so it's up to you to decide what to do with the guy. Do you go with the simplest solution and give him the boot, or do you defend its right to free speech and eventually accept that annoying goddamn pamphlet that he spent 30 hours on and went to Kinko's and Xerox like 300 of them? Jesus Christ, I get it. As you navigate the game's more populated areas, you overhear the NPC chatter which reveals just how much thought went into shaping this world. In case you're still not convinced, you can always whip out the Codex, your in-game encyclopedia on Mass Effect and its denizens to witness the horrifying level of painstaking detail. But there's a big difference between telling a well-structured story and what many have come to call world building. The key difference is that it's far easier to come up with interesting ideas, cool characters, and intriguing backstory than it is to shape up those elements into a compelling narrative. You could have the most badass ideas for a movie in the world that would totally make a million dollars if only someone would give me a break, but if there's no good storytelling to go along with those ideas, then they're only going to get you so far. That's not to say that there is no plot at all in Mass Effect. It's just that the plot is a little predictable and somewhat plotting, which unfortunately diminishes the impact that the game's world could have had. When the strong character moments occasionally intersect with the main plot, that's when the narrative shines brightest. But if all you care about is the lore, man, then this game is right up your alley. Almost every conversation goes long enough to convince you that you're nearing the end of it, only to reveal that you were just scratching the surface of the mountain of dialogue all along. Seriously, the dialogue scenes in this game are f***ing long, and while a lot of it is mostly entertaining and informative, one can only take so much standing around and talking. Sp 
Speaking of talking, there are so many unique lines of dialogue in Mass Effect that I'm convinced that Bioware is still writing and recording lines somewhere out there and downloading them directly to my consoles I played. Before you even attempt to evaluate the quality of the writing or acting, it's critical to recognize the sheer amount of lines that were recorded to cover the game's many nuanced scenarios. This includes the lines that change depending on the choices that the player makes throughout the game. Depending on the pre-service history and psychological profile you select when creating your character, you'll get different dialogue and reactions from the game's NPCs. The subtle differences make things feel less generic, which is sorely needed considering that Shepard runs the risk of being more vanilla than the Vitruvian man or woman. The voice acting itself is great, which makes sense considering the pedigree of the actors behind the roles. And to those of you who had to record the same lines in six barely different variations, and still manage to keep yourself from going crazy, we salute you. But I can't help but notice that the direction during these dialogue scenes could use a hot injection of dynamicism, considering how often they occur. The only shots that exist are the close-up, the medium with the two people, the over-the-shoulder, and the reverse over-the-shoulder. I understand that it's tough to make all your characters do things while they talk, but watching them stand there and blab at each other for the entirety of the game gives me flashbacks to watching bad student films. Mass Effect's score meshes together epic orchestral pieces with 80s grindhouse synth, and it somehow works. And while the visuals are genuinely very pretty, the world can often feel rather empty at times. The corridors seem extremely wide, and it can sometimes take forever to travel from one location to the next thanks to Shepard's incredibly slow movement speed. Not to mention the almost creepily empty planets that you'll often visit. There's an impressively grand sense of scale that's always present in Mass Effect, which is often subverted by how inappropriately depopulated it seems. It's like going to see a comedy show with just like two people in the audience. It's super weird. It may have a few problems, but the world that Mass Effect offers is one of the most engaging I've come across in a long time. Even some of the more ancillary characters possess actual depth, and the more you learn about this universe, the more you want to learn. It's seriously so refreshing to spend some time in a world where all these different cultures coexist, with no one telling you who you can and can't have casual space sex with. It's your right to choose. It may not be the most traditional RPG, but Mass Effect hits just about every mark on the role-playing checklist. Battles, affirmative. Exploration, counted for. Chatting with NPCs, literally hours of it. For your efforts, you'll get experience points thrown at you left and right, which allow you to level up and become an even better soldier for the glorious galactic military industrial complex. Milky Way, Milky Way, Milky Way! But before you can do any of that, you've got to design your personal Commander Shepard, which goes far beyond just playing dress up. It all starts with choosing your military specialization, which is just a fancy way of saying your class or job if you want to invoke even deeper RPG roots. There are six classes to choose from, and each one has a slightly different focus on the game's three main weapon disciplines. Guns, which go bang bang, tech, which can support your squad by hacking the planet, and biotics, which are basically freaking Jedi powers. Three of the game's six classes commit fully to these three disciplines, but just in case you want a little bit of peanut butter with your chocolate, the other three classes are hybrid mixtures of two disciplines. So if you wanted, you could actually be a Jedi Engineer, which I'd imagine would involve using your force powers to fix servers when they go down. Still don't feel like your Shepard is unique enough? Well, at a certain point, you can further specialize your class, guiding Shepard harder toward one end of your class's spectrum. Sure, you may be an adept, but what do you do when you're given a choice between more powerful defensive barriers and more devastating telekinetic attacks? More devastating telekinetic attacks, of course! What are you, mental? I'm not! Even if you begin to regret eschewing one of your classes for another, you can always balance your squad out by choosing the two companions that best complement your abilities. Your six companions don't have the same flexibility that you do since they're locked to their classes, but they can be shuffled in and out of your party depending on the situation. Except I can't shuffle my party members since I have those companion trophies to worry about. See, you have to complete roughly 50 missions with a companion, or pretty much the entire game, in order to unlock their respective trophies. 
It's not the worst restriction in the world, but it did lock my various versions of Shepard into very specific classes for each playthrough, since I had to make sure that the entire squad covered each other's weaknesses. Let it be known that there is no room for silly things like self-expression when completing video games. Video games are serious goddamn business. The Milky Way is apparently home to free enterprise, since there are several different manufacturers, each churning out their own versions of the game's various weapons and tools. Not all pistols, bioamps, and omni tools are created equally, with each version having different strengths and weaknesses. Now, even though there are plenty of different ways to dispatch your enemies in Mass Effect, just like a Tarantino movie, everything basically boils down to a gunfight. Sorry, prospective hackers and padawans, you can't just go around spamming your special abilities until the fight is over. This is a third-person shooter, after all. Unfortunately, even with the four different types of firearms available, Mass Effect's gunplay in general feels a bit too static. The firefights in the beginning of the game feel disappointingly similar to that of the late game skirmishes, and that's a big problem. Things are only exacerbated by the anemic amount of unique enemy types in Mass Effect, or perhaps it just seems that way since all of the bad guys basically fight the same f***ing way, standing around unintelligently, occasionally taking pot shots at you, perhaps walking directly towards you in your direction, but for the most part, just eating bullets. What's worse is that scoring hits on these guys feels really unresponsive since so many of them don't seem to take any hits done whatsoever. You get good feedback when you see their health bar deplete, but the fact that you often don't even break their stride when emptying full clips into them just feels... wrong. Mass Effect's few bosses were the biggest departure from the bad guy formula, and were welcomed because of it. But in the end, they too amounted to little more than bullet sponges. What Mass Effect does have a lot of are choices, mostly within its many dialogue segments, which, I'll remind you, are f***ing long but they're made more enjoyable in part due to your choices actually having legitimate ramifications on the gameplay. Depending on how you choose to converse, entire plot lines and avenues of content might be opened up or closed off to you. So watch your goddamn mouth! This is exemplified in Mass Effect's morality system, which either has you inching towards becoming a paragon by performing patient, selfless acts, or transforming into a renegade by subscribing to the tenet of shoot first, shoot again, then shoot the guy trying to ask a question, and then shoot the guy right behind him. Saint or asshole? It may be an overly simple moral scale, but I can't blame Bioware, since that's how most people seem to think morality works in real life nowadays. When you're finally done haggling and chatting with every alien who footsied you into a conversation vortex, and you actually want to, well, I don't know, explore space? SPACE! Then maybe you'll want to head to the galaxy map. This thing is rather extensive, offering four separate views on just how alone we are in the universe. There are a ton of planets and locations to explore in Mass Effect, and while that freedom is thrilling, the reality is a bit disappointing. Almost every place you visit is just kind of bare. The only things you'll usually find on the explorable planets are a few enemies and small compounds that hold more enemies. Perhaps condensing these locations into fewer, more rich areas would have been a better way to go, especially when you account for the Mako. Good God, the Mako. This thing makes me want to write a letter to Congress imploring them to defund NASA entirely. The controls change depending on the camera angle. You can sometimes drive up sheer cliffs, and other times be thwarted by the tiniest of bumps. It's unwieldy, inconsistent, and boring. The Mako is the reason why humans aren't respected by other races in the Mass Effect universe. It's the worst handling vehicle I've experienced in a long time. The only nice thing I can say about this goddamn thing is that it's faster than walking. But nobody's perfect, including myself. Even with all the research I did before playing this one, I failed to realize that after beating casual difficulty as an engineer and starting up a hardcore playthrough as a fresh level one adept shepherd, that I'd get my face kicked in so hard. There's simply no way to compete in hardcore as a brand new character. But I still had the other classes to worry about, since they each have corresponding trophies for racking up kills with their respective weapons and abilities. So I made sure to try every other possible version of Shepard out in my next two casual playthroughs. Soldier, Adept, Female Paragon, and Renegade were all represented, 
And as it turns out, I liked playing as the soldier the most of all. So that's the class that I was gonna bank on for my hardcore difficulty run. It's certainly tougher than casual, but still very much fun and fair. But unfortunately, when I completed hardcore mode, the game played me. The trophy that's supposed to pop for beating it, did it at all, which meant I had to play through hardcore again, which meant I had to drive the Mako again. And even after all of that, insanity difficulty was still waiting for me. This is where things got extremely messy. Up until this point, Mass Effect's gameplay hadn't required much thought. But on insanity, if you want to survive, you have to inch your way through every battle, know exactly where all the cover is, and the precise capabilities of you and your partners. You go down in two shots, and enemies laugh at your bullets. Locking a trophy behind completing this mode was cruel. Understandable, but cruel. The combat might be repetitive, the trophies might be bugged, and the f***ing Mako might be a thing, but Mass Effect remains a solid RPG that offers a lot of room for customization and experimentation. When you couple all of that with the imaginative and well-constructed setting, it's no wonder why this game is remembered so fondly. The only thing that would make it better is if every dialogue wheel included an option for awkwardly backing away from whoever is talking to you. I must be dreaming. There are actual unlockables in this game? Well, I'll be damned. It turns out that as you unlock trophies, they provide benefits to your characters on future playthroughs. For example, getting the trophy for killing 250 synthetic enemies will give your characters 10% more shields, and reaching level 50 will earn you 5% more experience. There's a bonus for almost every trophy, so no matter where you are along your path to completion, it always feels like you're working towards your ultimate goal. Now this is what I'm talking about. Going above and beyond is actually rewarded. You may not get anything for completing the game 100%, but still, this is well done. Bioware, you're killing it. Completing Mass Effect takes a lot of time and mental resistance to the detrimental effects of repeating the same tasks over and over. This is a huge game with many sections where you don't actually get to do that much, but the core gameplay and narrative are of high enough quality that you rarely mind the game's other faults. In my playthroughs of Mass Effect, there were 106 deaths, 6 full campaign playthroughs, 60 levels gained, 47 trophies unlocked, 103 hours of total playtime, and 2 middle fingers way the f*** up in the air for whoever designed the Mako. Here they are! You know you deserve them, I know you're gonna be mad if you're watching this, but why? WHY?! Mass Effect is a great game all around. Completing it might be too much for most, but for dedicated fans and those with a lot of time on their hands, it's certainly feasible. The ideas established in this game are impressive and ambitious, and based on what I've experienced so far, I'm excited to see what the sequels have to offer. Just not right now. Like, check back with me in a while. It's gonna be a while. Mass Effect is one of those recent new games that I actually agree with everyone across the board of what this game is like. I have to say that I haven't really played the other two games, but from what I understand from the basic culture of Mass Effect is the second game is the best one, and apparently they refined a lot of the combat and a lot of the problems that I've tended to have with Mass Effect 1. With that said, Mass Effect is a large game with a massive universe and engrossing story that just keeps you going the whole time, but it does lack that little polish that I'm willing to let go, hence what comes to us in the second form of Mass Effect 2. Now, as regard to being a completionist, I wouldn't necessarily say it is worth the entire journey. I would say at most it's worth two playthroughs to experience the Renegade and the Paragon side, but other than that, I think they did where I stand. With that in mind, guys, I give this game my completionist rating of finish it. Finish it! That's all the time we have for today, guys, so please, as always, let me know what about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you are new here, do me a favor to the subscribe button in the boxes area below. If you missed last week's video on Uncharted 3, which actually I really loved that video, and I hope you guys did too, be sure to check that out. Uh, that's in the boxes as well. And don't forget about the giveaway, that Switch giveaway. Leave me a link in the description below. So that's all, and I'll see you guys next Friday. Bye-bye.